It's going to be one of those days where I can't talk and I can feel it. But I've got my water, I've got too much hair, and we're going to try it anyways. What's up, guys? Welcome to another film photography related video. Um, today is kind of an exciting one for me because we're going to be talking about a film stock that I found and used, and it quickly became one of my favorite film stocks to use, and I just really like the results I've gotten out of it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some images that I've made with this film, and we're going to kind of look at the film's grain structure, the colors it produces, the film's latitude, all your basic stuff so that you can kind of get a basic feel of what this film does and how it looks. But before we do that, we're going to go back in time, and we're going to go back to late June, early July of last year when I first had the idea of starting this channel and just kind of recording my film process and how I make film photos. And we're going to look at some night photos that I took with this film, and that film is Fuji Industrial 100. Okay guys, so we've got our first stop of the night here. I am at this pool that I've passed by a million times and seen it at night with the lights on and it looks pretty cool. We've got the Canon P set up right here. There's a lot of cars coming by right now, but I'm gonna take a meter reading and probably do two exposures, probably like five seconds and 10 seconds. And we'll probably do a couple different angles. So let's see how they come out. It was hard to get the framing I wanted for these shots while I was shooting through the fence, but I found something I was happy with and rattled off three exposures. Six seconds, eight seconds, and 15 seconds long, all at f5.6. Here's how they turned out. So I took three different exposures from the same spot, um, but I'm, I think I'm going to get a little greedy and try a portrait version of this shot too. So we're going to do the same three exposure times. I did 8 seconds, 6 seconds, and 15 seconds, um, all at f5.6. So hopefully they all turn out well, but let me show you my kind of jank portrait setup for this tripod because it's not really meant for that easily anyways. This head is not meant for like easily switching between portrait and landscape, so I've just got it cocked all cattywampus and it works. I mean, it's stable, so we've got this kind of angled upwards too, so we're gonna get more of the sky in this, so let's see how it turns out. <laughs> I think all of these shots turned out well, but when I look at them side by side, I think I prefer the middle exposure. I was happy with the photos I took, but they weren't what I pre-visualized. I wanted a higher angle, so I moved the camera and captured this. This is by far my favorite pool photo, and I even came back the next day to get another version and make it a set. Okay guys, stop two. We are taking a picture of this, it's like an old mail truck with like an airstream behind it and it's just been sitting in this back alley with like a light shining on it for a long time. And I've been waiting for a good night to do this uh, with a long exposure. Um, I just took a meter reading, so we're gonna do 5.6 at two seconds. We might do another one, maybe like F8 at like four or five seconds. We'll see what we wanna do with that, but. Let's take a picture and see how it turns out. I ended up taking two exposures of this scene. I like the tones in the first, but I like that the F8 aperture of the second cuts down on the light glare. Also, Isaac Newton and his gang of rings can get bent. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little kind of snippet of me doing some night photography with this film. Uh, sorry there wasn't a whole lot of footage, but this was back when I first had the idea to start this channel, so I didn't really know what I was doing as well as I do now. Um, but anyways, let's get into the film and the qualities of it. So what is Fuji Industrial 100? Well, for starters, it's not really called Fuji Industrial 100. 
Um, that's just kind of the general accepted name as people have kind of tried to come up with an easy translation of the Japanese text that's on the box. Other than the kind of obscure name, Fuji Industrial is a film stock that came in both 100 and 400 varieties and was a film that was kind of marketed and intended for business purposes. So there's been some question as to if it's a completely unique emulsion or if it's just a rebadged film stock. And there's been some uh, research done that kind of indicates that it's rebadged Fuji Color 100 Japan, which is another Japan only film that kind of differs a little bit from Superior or their pro line of films. I saw a kind of comparison article online where they did some research and took both of those films and put the film strips up side by side. And when you looked at the edge of the film, both Fuji Keller 100 Japan and Fuji Industrial had the same information across the top and bottom. So it's more than likely a modified Fuji 100 Japan. There's a little bit of tweaking they must have done to Fuji Industrial though, because it seems to be much closer to a tungsten balance than the other Fuji films. And that does make sense if this film is supposedly marketed for business purposes and is probably used inside a lot with artificial light. So that does make sense. So in terms of colors, I would say that Fuji Industrial favors reds and greens like most Fuji films do, um, but the colors are a lot less punchy and they're a lot less pronounced, which I actually kind of like. And I would say generally the colors are a little bit more true to life than other Fuji film stocks. So what I noticed when I looked at a lot of the photos that I shot with this film, uh, browns and greens really, really look good on this film. There are a couple shots that I looked at that I was just like, wow, the browns look so rich and lifelike and they just look so true to life. Also, I think the kind of muted colors and different color balance work really well with this film because unlike Superior and some of the other Fuji film stocks, when you underexpose it a little bit, it doesn't lean into green really, it leans more into blue, which I think is a lot more flattering. So in terms of the grain, I think the grain is really, really fine if you kind of nail the exposure and you're shooting at box speed. If you overexpose it or underexpose it a little bit, then the grain starts to pop out. And the grain is a lot different than a lot of the grains that I've seen in other film stocks. It's kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, like fuzzy sort of. And it, I honestly think it looks pretty good, um, especially in a couple of the photos I took. I just think the grain looks really like timeless and classic. But honestly, that's all subjective. What I think looks good, you might think looks like shit, and that's what makes photography awesome, is everybody has different tastes and shoots stuff differently. And all I can do is just show you what it looks like. So if we take a closer look at some of the night photos that I took with this film, I honestly think it performs really, really well in low light and night situations. Um, honestly, I think it performs a little bit more like a 200 film in terms of like exposure times and stuff that you need to do to get a good exposure. I honestly thought, I thought the colors looked good, I thought the tones and the blacks and everything looked good for the night photos, and for underexposed stuff, I thought it looked a lot better than Superior or other Fuji films when underexposed, so that's a really good positive about this film. So Fuji did discontinue this film in early 2020, so it's getting harder to find, so if you want to try it, I would pick it up now before the cost goes way up and it's just, it's too hard to find. I did some looking online, like on eBay and stuff, to find a little bit more of this industrial to shoot before it's completely gone, and a lot of people are selling it in bulk packs of 10, so if you don't know that you really like this film, it's gonna be kinda hard to find just one or two rolls at a time. So that's about all I can say about Fuji Industrial. I really like this film. I think it looks really good and it's versatile. You can use it in different situations and it holds up. I did buy two more 24 exposure rolls of this film, so expect at least one more video of me shooting with it. Um, but yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.